so possible improvements. So if you think about all the um, things I've gone through, this is actually a very generic algorithm that can be applied to any kind of product as long as you have the user interaction log. So it's not very specific uh, to probably all kind of products. Um, so you, there are possible improvements that can be made. Uh, uh, and the, the benefit of this is that because of how the algorithm is actually broken down into two components, they can actually be improved separately from each other. Uh, for example, the similarity model can be improved into considering um, complementary items, supplementary items, and then um, with the linear algebra step, uh, that is not the it's not going to be the best way to calculate the user item uh, relevancy score. Uh, there can be a deep learning model behind, or you can do uh, more straightforward. Uh, uh, greater boosting machines to supplement and improve the relevancy score computation. <coughs> so that's uh, what I've covered. Uh, in conclusion, I've talked about an algorithm that can, does, can do dynamic personal recommendations. <coughs> Construction is actually a very straightforward recommendation algorithm. Uh, it has a very basic data requirement. However, it is, also, it is still a useful baseline to do real-time real recommendation. And um, the main challenge is uh, in doing the engineering. So before I end, uh, I just want to advertise that we are hiring. Uh, you can go to our website we are hiring. Uh, this is just for the data team. So we are hiring data scientists, data engineer, software engineer, uh, Death of engineer as well as technical product manager. Um, but there are some things as well as software engineers for my team, so uh, <laughs> it would be good to have some help. You, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so. Um, No, I think uh, nobody can submit a question. You say nobody can submit. Yeah, yeah because there are yeah. Yeah. <laughs> permission <laughs> issues. Yeah. 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 I need to change the permission, but am I? You are right. Yeah, you say I'm a SMA student graduating this May. Uh, my question is, how did you know your uh, recommendation system is better than doing nothing? Better than how to evaluate the model. So, in order to do model comparison, um, to do model evaluation for recommendations, right, um, most of the time you have to do it as a test. So, um, with regards to doing personalized recommendations, um, a way you can do comparison is when you are showing the component on the home page. Um, <coughs> you compare the click-through rates uh, in real time, sorry, online, uh, against other components within that same page. Uh. And the other components also must function the same way in the sense that they must show products uh, that actually when the user click, it leads to the product in this page. Uh. So once we have that kind of um, comparison that can be done, we can run an A-B test and see um, whether showing the Personalized recommendations lead to higher click-through rates from uh, from the home page to the item detail page. Whether it leads to better click-through rate than not having it there. Yeah, that's the question. So comparing click-through rate. Yeah. Some yeah. So for example, from the home page, we have we have a aggregated click-through rate from home page to the items <coughs> to the item detail page. Without the, without the personalization component, as well as with the personalization component, does it need to aggregate, aggregate a higher click through rate um, if the component is shown to the user? Okay. Hi, I'm Shuman Chou. I'm passing my master's from the US. Uh, one question, a couple of questions though. Uh, initial few slides you mentioned uh, Pareto principle. Uh, I believe uh, for portal uh, sites like Amazon, wherein if you search for an item widget, uh, it 
hugely popular item those come up yeah. so uh, and the uh, unpopular would yeah. drain down on the so yeah how is practical principle applicable in particular to portal like traveloka and so also like my second question the all the three models that you would think in the every initial slide of every model you mentioned that you remove the seen items yeah uh, was the is it to counter the factor okay. okay so for your first question is um how do i make sure that it's not recommending just popular items is that what i say is that your question um but it essentially it's like um, all the popular items coming up yeah
Uh, if you want to do that, then we need to really think about how we put the data together before we do any form of aggregation. Uh, okay. uh, so then I have another question. So then is there any like, uh, system to recommend like kind of combination of product or like, let's say like this customer book a hotel in like uh, KL, then like uh, you, you can also recommend it to like some like transportation or any other services around the KL. Is that mm -hmm. any system to do that? Um, there's nothing off the shelf. Of course, you need to understand your customer journey. This requires a lot of um, looking, looking through the data, having uh, specialized teams to understand how the user use your product, and then what kind of activity infer what kind of files they are going to use. Uh, if I'm going to buy a flight ticket uh, to KL, they probably want to buy a hotel in KL. They probably want to look at attractions in KL. They're buying a business class ticket, then probably they're not interested in any of that. This is one hotel. Yeah, something like this. So this um, how do you take account of all this inside of commercial engine? There's there's not something generic that can work, you need to understand really uh, the customer journey and how, how it varies depending on the usage. I'll come to you next. Quick question: What percentage? Oh, uh, Ben Sinegi from uh, DataBricks. What percentage of your users actually sign in, where you can actually, oh. where you can go and track them? Yeah, so <laughs> the trick to this is that I'm not actually using signing users, but rather um, I'm using cookies. So the cookie ID is unique uh, based on the based on the app install, based on the browser. So we do not actually require uh, users to be logged in um, in order for us to use their data. Um, having logged in users is useful if we want to make inference on cross device usage. But in general, uh, this is not a problem because users tend to stick to one device uh, when they are using a website. Uh, Indonesians, uh, I mean, in Asia, it's mostly a mobile first uh, country, so. Uh, in fact, we find that desktop usage is quite low. So if you're using a mobile phone, unless you uninstall the app, the cookie ID is going to be almost similar to the profile ID or the user ID. Hi, uh, my name is Yahweh. So this question is for Def and Yula. Um, can you um, share a, a bit with us, right? Like, what's the business impact that your work has talked about, both for the language modeling portion and the system? <laughs> business impact for recommendation. Um, I mean, one straightforward way is to, if we can recommend relevant items, it will definitely increase um, the usage, the engagement of the app uh, by our users. Uh. Of course, if you can measure across the funnel uh, users' clicks based on recommendation, then it's, it will be obvious how we can justify our value based on the revenue generated from recommendations. Uh, this is, uh, I don't have a number, unfortunately. Uh, yeah, recommendations is still a very new idea within general guidance of doing machine learning recommendations. So uh, it's still in the process of uh, getting this into production and having, measuring the performance. So I do not have a value right now. So to answer your question on the second part, I think it comes down to two things. Um, uh, the way we uh, approach the problem is we, before we work on something, we try and make sure it's aligned with actually solving something the business wants to solve. And then the onus is on them to come to us and say, well, actually, we've got a couple of different ideas. And uh, then we have a few very crystal clear conversations around, OK, so this is what you want as a product. What do you think is the impact to your business, to, to our business or on uh, by, by developing this feature? Uh, and that forces us both to be honest, uh, both from a product management perspective and from an our perspective, so that A, we, we ensure with the limited resources we have, we're working on constructive things. Uh, in terms of actual dollars, or I, I don't know if it makes sense to you know, um, talk about that, but, but I will say, so for example, some of the work that we've done. Uh, we were looking at some of our ops teams were looking at sort of tens of thousands of users a day, trying
trying to make sure that we are providing the same experience for our users and that sort of workload has come down significantly. Um, so we're helping them scale out into more businesses. And, uh, so that's basically been from 10,000 to less than 10. So that, that's, that's, that's it. Okay, so we will have one last question, if any. I'm sure the speakers will stay around after this fight. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, my questions. Uh, uh, first, uh, you mentioned about uh, engineering work being the most difficult part about uh, uh, building the model. And I wonder why, uh, can you elaborate more on what, what the difficulties you make? Uh, and also, the uh, during the engineering process, do you interact with your business team? Do you seek input from them? How do you interact with them? Sorry, can you repeat your second question? Uh, with your business team, do you seek information or insights from your business team when you don't know what what the data or how to how to uh, make sense of the data at the initial stage? So the first question is regards to the engineering demands of the um, of this model. Uh, why is it difficult? Is that um, usually when you are doing tracking uh, of the user interaction, these are. Um, these are usually recorded in real time, but then they are inserted in the database in a batch way. Uh, so, which, which means that we, I'm only able to get the data that is one day late. So, if that's the case, then my recommendations will be based on your interaction yesterday. I'm not able to, in, I'm not able to react to what you're clicking right now. So, in order to if have that available, it means that uh, I need to implement tracking that inserts uh, in real time into something that's in memory so that I can, I'm able to access it also in real time at low latency for me to get all this information out. Because even if, if it's inserted in real time, but I'm not able to get it in real time, <coughs> or if this takes a very long, maybe a second for me to retrieve, then the recommendation will load very slowly. It will deteriorate the user experience and they may not have even they may not even be able to see your recommendations if that's the case. Uh. So that's the main reason why there's better engineering requirements for this. Um, sorry, your second question. Uh, how do you, oh, how how do do you work, work with your do I work with, um, For this model, I don't need to work with, if I want to implement this modern Berlina, I do not have to work with um, the business that I'm working with. Doing recommendation of products. Uh. Of course, um, in order to customize the recommendation engine and to ensure that it's highly performant and also uh, get some insights on the customer journey, uh, we need to work with the, uh, the business units. Uh. So, in Jump Local, the business units will have their own data analysts that have better understanding of the usage of users on the type of business. Um, for example, hotels or attractions, we have business analysts there. Uh, they have good understanding of the form of data, the patterns that we can look out for. And then um, I will, of course, work with them closely to see what I can exploit and use inside my recommendation engine models. Okay, can we give a round of applause for our speakers?